and it's Gordo here from Gordo's Games and we're back for some not just Digimon TCG content today eh? uh, so about for some kind of some more Bandai content as a whole so as uh, as the channel grows we're doing a lot more things to try and uh, broaden horizons not necessarily the team but more myself um, I've been playing Digimon f uh, since its release I really enjoy the game uh, but I decided to try my hand in some of the other games and I want to kind of get your views on it Obviously, if it's something you want to see on the channel, if you want to see uh, profiles, gameplay, basically, we just want to get an understanding of like, how well it will be received. Because at the mo at this point, we do everything just so that you can obviously enjoy the game alongside us. See the things that we're th uh, thinking about, the deck profiles, the list, um, the tier list, and things like that. Um, so we want to see where we stand as a whole, and what your thoughts are on Bandai as a TCG collective, not just uh, from Digimon so if you do enjoy this content if you do have something to say don't forget to leave a comment down below but overall as normal don't forget to like comment subscribe hit that bell for notifications so you know when this content goes live for you and uh, we'll just hop over here to the profile screen because and then we'll have a little we'll have a little chat about it so um you may see some of the cards scattered around already but obviously the main one we're here for obviously to begin with is is digimon digimon as a whole has been a uh a very interesting game has built up over its time expanded into multiple different uh, mechanics and keywords and how the game progresses you know such things like digicross you know you know your uh, your old-fashioned just standard secure attack box no option activating your tamer control stuff now i'm uh, these cards were just loose on my desk because i'm just uh, revamping a deck at the moment but you know Digimon as itself has grown massively since back in the tier, uh, you know, 1.0 days. We played the game and it was literally Villa Central. You know, it was uh, the battle of Blue Omni versus Red Omni. And there were some odd things in between, you know, that could have kind of got mixed up in there. So Rookie Rush was played then. A very different kind of area of the game compared to where we are now. Uh, we went through the stages uh, where... It, where tier zero decks like Nightmon, uh, Lord Nightmon were a thing, or Crusader Mon, however you want to refer to one. Uh, since then, I don't think we've risked it. Uh, I mean, we had at some points close to tier zeros, but we've managed to avoid having something that's unequivocally a tier zero deck. There are a lot of tier one decks, but nothing too overly strong. Um, but the game as a whole has developed a lot. There's got a big fan base, um, not just from the game itself, but just the nostalgia of the, you know, nostalgia of the series, etc. So it's, it's great to see it, the games, how the game's been supported and built up. And I, I look forward to seeing more from Digimon as a whole. Um, and we've got all, all sorts of new mechanics coming into the game. Obviously, you've got the Royal, I think it's the Royal Knights deck that comes out, which allows you to start messing around with things from the raising area. Um, there's all sorts of getting support. So going after BT12. So after BT12, Shine Greymon gets a, a nice little kicker. So that deck's going to be a thing to worry about. You've got EX4 Shangri-La uh, Ruin mode, which is nice for things uh, for decks like Shangri-La, potentially, or for things like BL Star Mine as well. It can be used in those pieces. So there's a lot of things to look forward in the Digimon community. Um, now, well, I know we've done a lot of uh, TED talks and uh, topic talks about is the game in a bad state? Is it uh, is it getting worse? Um, what do we do about the competitive scene? Because there are generally ongoing issues with it. You know, when you look at the pricing, uh, it's applicable, but then there's the, the limitations to go with it. I guess this uh, falls into your own preference. Because if if you're not playing one of these decks, you get don't get uh, that gets hit, then you're in a good spot. It really doesn't affect your day. But if you do, it can leave a bad taste in your mouth as to how you want to be involved in the game. So hopefully we look to see some changes or some kind of idea of what, which way they want to go on the competitive side of things or at least if they can look to provide us with more competitive events to allow us to uh, get involved with these things and use our normal decks as well as the ultimate cup decks that they're trying to push forward with a single color mechanics so moving on from digimon there are a couple of games that you know have sprung to mind obviously looking to try uh, originally for me a little backstory for me i originally came from uh dragon ball so, Dragon Ball itself is ever. I, I do. I like the game for its mechanic and that. Obviously, the interaction basis of it, the leader cards. I'm a particularly a fan of the leader cards. I like having an archetype that's formed around the leader and gets benefits from it. Like this one, for instance. This is called Agents Agents of Destruction, and basically lets you play like a rainbow-colored deck because it has a, a permanent 
So like I said, basically Brock is printed on the card, so it's always, always, in, always in play. Uh, treat agent destruction cards in your hand as if they had no specified cost. So it means you don't have to pay particular colours for it, things like that. So it allows you to play a variation of stuff with it. But I always found lead cards to be quite an interesting thing. So, which led me to my the uh, game that I, want, I did get involved in, which you can see right here. Um, One Piece. Now, I went and bought, obviously, the starter decks. I've got one of each of them. Uh, I got bought two of each of them, so I can give them all a try and see, where I, see how I feel about them. Overall, I've got to say, I'm quite surprised. I, I'm quite pleasantly surprised with the game because I, I feel like they did a good amount of work balancing things and getting the gameplay from things like Dragon Ball because our uh, Dragon Ball is great. Um, uh, obviously, that game is developed now. Obviously, there is a lot of a lot of money cards in the game, and I think there is going to be. I think there's an element of that in One Piece as well. I don't know if it's a hundred percent, but I do know there are some like proper money cards when it comes to your ults, or your promos and that. And I just I, that is kind of an uh, each area from Dragon Ball that's quite similar. Um, doesn't put me off to an extent to the game because, again. I do like the art, the actual cards themselves. I mean, the only thing from the start next I will say is, um, as I've got them, like literally that curvature there, that was pulled straight from the start there, not long ago. So the curving of the cards, not over through all, but the quality of them, like the uh, texture of the cards and the art, especially the artwork on the leaders, I particularly do like. Uh, and some of the alts you can get from it. So. I think they've done really well on the artwork. I think they've done well to design the game as a whole. Um, I like the interest, uh, the part that involves the Don system. So like, Digimon has its own unique trait with the memory gauge, using that facility to play out your turns. You do the same, similar kind of thing with One Piece, using Don cards as your, your let's just say energy, or your memory, if we go by Digimon standard. So if you were to take turn one, you get one done to start with, and every turn after that you gain two dons. And you use these to pay for things, ramp up your characters to allow you to aggress the board, pay for options, responses, uh, because this game does have interactions, which is something obviously that um, Digimon doesn't quite have. And it, that's why somewhat a reason as to why I'm trying out some other things just to get a feel for the games and just bring uh, some of my other elements of TCGs in just to see how I fare in them. It's been a while because I also played Final Fantasy TCG before this, and I did dabble in Yu-Gi-Oh for a while, but that was many, 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 many moons ago. Last time I played uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was uh, when I was rocking a Star Wars slash Wizard of Oz deck, Cosmos, uh, and Budgeons and things like that. So you know, it's been a while. Um, but overall, I think it, the a decent quality game to made. I, I like how the, the mechanics of the game work. I do think it's quite balanced at this point. Um, I can't say anything on a tier list kind of perspective as to where things stand because I am relatively new to it. But I'm looking to get more involved in it. So let me know your comments below what you think of One Piece as a whole if you play the game, if you have partaken in it, or if you, if you at least considered it. And then give me an idea of um, your pet peeves or things you like about it. I'd be interested to know. So that's one piece. Obviously, to go with uh, how things are at the moment, we do have one other Bandai game that's came uh, came into fruition. Uh, now, I'll be honest; I don't know anything about the lore of that game in any any slight circumstance. Um, so I'm not going to really pretend to be a professional and know the ins and outs of the game. But one of my teammates is playing it. Um, and I, quite, I found it quite interesting in the system they use, kind of like how Digimon uses the core system. Uh, sorry, core system, memory system. One Piece has the Don system. This game actually uses a core system. I want to get the cores out because the fiddly little things that I lose all over the place. Uh, but yes, we are talking about Battle Spirit Saga. I never played the original one, Battle Spirit itself, or I've watched the anime, so I am completely novice on that part or any of the lore that goes with these. But one of my teammates is particularly fond of it all. Um, so if it is something you're interested in, I'm pretty sure I can rope it them into uh, giving us a little rundown on things um, they will be playing to this game quite a bit and I will be looking to play into it myself as you can see here I elected to play a uh, white deck uh, so this one's actually a white control deck so, uh, I think of it like Digimon like kind of uh, somewhat similar to security control um, that's not because I want to be toxic by the way it's just something I elect just to try out I do have some other decks as well um, 
but this is the one I'm trying to look at, uh, look the main just to get a feel for the game. But I, I think it's a very interesting uh, setup for the game because you basically how it, how it starts out. You have five lives, which is five cores. Um, you have a reserve core, a core area. Um, when you start the game, you have one soul core, which is just like a red core. And obviously, if you pay that for certain things, you get certain, uh, certain effects that pop off with it. And you get three normal blue cores. Uh, if you go first, you do get to draw a card, um, but you don't gain a core. But every turn after that, um, you will gain a core. So you will go through your steps. You go through draw, refresh, and core, or, or on one of the other way around. Just draw, core, refresh, could be. Um, but you'll gain a core every turn. And there are certain ways to ramp up in the game to try and get yourself more cores. And you'll basically pay costs for these, uh, for these your cores. For instance, like this one costs eight. You also do have a reduction uh, reduction of cost on these, so you two make them cost less. Uh, for instance, if this costs eight, if you have four white on the board that share the same symbol, um, you will get a reduction of four because you've got four things on board that match this, which means it will only cost four uh, four to actually bring out to the field. So a lot of it is trying to build that presence up and trying to uh, get those reductions in place, whereas some decks just don't care about the reductions and they'll just hard play things. There are um, aggro decks or mid-range decks which use low cost vanillas, um, which allow you just like play them out really cheaply. And you have cards that have like a one cost but a one reduction, which means you can technically reduce them down to zero. The only thing you need to do is put, at least put a core on it because it can't exist on board without a core. But three, three completely different games, I'd say. I don't think they all share qualities uh, similar to each other. Uh, One Piece and Battle Spirits were emphasizing more on the interaction side of things, being able to have responses to uh, to attacks and that. Uh, but the same token, slight differences. So, for example, in One Piece and Digimon, you can attack into suspended bodies. You don't have to just go straight for life. Uh, in Battle Spirits, you can't. You are uh, you you're basically swinging at life every time, and your opponent can use their spirits or what they're calling their spirits uh, to block because they don't they don't necessarily have blockers. They are just have spirits. You, they are all technically blockers. You just use their bodies to try and uh, slow down any damage you take. So just the varied ways in how the games play out. I do think they've done really well with the game overall. I'm I do get a kind of Magic the Gathering vibe from it. I've never played Magic the Gathering. In a massive sense, I played uh, some a while ago, and I, I, I quite like the game. But you know, you have the whole nexus, which is basically lands, I guess. Um, you have magic in it, which is magic, um, and you do have things like burst and that, which is uh, some of the. Um, basically, when it when it meets a certain trigger, you can have one burst card active. So as long as you meet a certain trigger, you can flip it over and activate a card. And you can pay an additional cost to use other effects as well with it. So they like your response card and stuff like that. Um, but overall, Bandai itself has expanded quite a lot into the TCG kind of things. They obviously they had Dragon Ball Super. They uh, then Digimon came on the horizon. I, can't, I don't, I don't, I think Battle Spirits the original one was Bandai. It could be completely wrong. I, I, somebody have to correct me on that. one um they've moved into one piece and then obviously they moved into battle spirits where they uh they look to offer a quite a uh, large cash pool to go with it um which is obviously created a bit of a buzz around the game and i generally think it's uh look at man as a whole is looking at to be in a very good spot across the tcgs and i'm not sitting here declaring that they're going to be one of the top five that is a hard market to even consider to move it into but at the rate they're going and obviously the amount of effort they're putting into these games, I think they're looking to be in a good spot. The only thing they do need to remember is obviously not to uh, completely let some of the games die off, like things like Digimon and that, because they're obviously torn to other new things that have come out. Um, so that's my uh, that's my TED talk. That is my uh, little chat about Bandai. And obviously what we're looking to do here. So if you're interested in seeing more content, obviously Digimon, is not going anywhere. That is the forefront of where we started. That is what Gordas Games uh, basically began the T in the TCG world. Um, so that will be the forefront. But obviously, if you are interested in seeing things like uh, any One Piece profiles, any uh, One Piece gameplay, Battle Spirit Saga profiles, gameplay tier list, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that like, comment, subscribe, 
hit that bell for notifications so you know when the content goes live for you because all the support is appreciated we've just pro pro six subscribers um we've had a nice buzz from all of you and it's been uh, great to see it's been well received and we appreciate it but let us know more things about what you would like from us and that might be you may turn around and say you don't want to see any of these things by all means obviously we might test the waters with it but if you want to see more specific things to do with digimon give me an idea of what you want to see and we, me or one of my team will put something together for you all so thank you for the support and uh we'll catch you next time